Right, today we're going to make a video about the biggest myth in endurance training, which I think so many people seem to say happens with elite pros, but the absolute opposite is the case. It's all about training intensity distribution. And I just want to say, I don't necessarily think what the pros do is optimal. However, what they do is very different to what everyone thinks or well, makes you think they do. Um, and I don't know, really know why, but we're just going to go through some papers about training intensity distributions. And I'm going to show you some pro training like that they've written or I've done research on to show you what they do. So uh, basically, the majority of studies have a pyramidal training intensity distribution. So most at zone one, zone two, zone three, zone two is like between your threshold. Zone one is sub like LT1 where you first start to get lactate. Zone three is like big gas over threshold. So what we can see here is that like articles reviewing the training intensity distribution of endurance athletes conclude that elite endurance athletes put 8% of their training at low intensity, 20% high intensity with two high intensity training sessions per week to induce, suffices to induce adaptions for performance. Um, so yeah, basically that's kind of their point here is that, you know, you only need to do a small amount. Um, again, we can go over to this study as well. Um, it's all about how basically the best gains people made was doing 80%. 80 20 um now this again is i think in uh hours per week it's six hours a week so it's not it's kind of rogue but again it goes to show it's actually quite a lot of intensity to when it's 20 percent when you start to take it out but again we'll show go over to this one as well successful endurance training involves a lot of intensity um involves manipulation training intensity duration frequency again you see 20 percent of periods dominated by high intensity work so you see this 80 20 just kind of like parroted the whole time um, here's kind of a, a useful picture of like what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the three zone model. So the point is you don't want to go over this mark, pa mark part too much. Why is that? Well, again, it, it, here, it, basically the point is if you go over the first ventilatory threshold or LT1, this thing, zone one, uh, then you get autonomic nervous system disturbances. That basically means you, you're not recovering as well as maybe you could do. So again, that's kind of the point. Again, if we look at this uh, our study here, again, you see that 75%, 8%, 17% of kind of like zone ones to two of junior cross country skiers. Um, so not necessarily cycling. Again, cycling though, uh, in this article is also mentioned about how um, cyclists, again, perform this kind of duration as well. So I think there's two things to take from this. There's the 80-20 rule, which I don't think is necessarily incorrect in terms of the fact of like, most of your time is in going to be in zone one if you train so much. But I think what's interesting is kind of like a lot of people parroting this thing, which is about the whole two high intensity days a week. And that, you know, everyone's basically saying you don't need to do too much intensity. Really what's important um, is kind of actually ensuring uh, that you have a lot of easy days. But then the thing is, I just don't know if that's true, because when you look at people's trainings, this is Damiano Caruso. I made a video on this. I went through all his training from December to April before he came third at the Giro. He had all the power there. Um, okay, you can see a couple of rides. So he goes to Tide. He has a couple of easy days here. And then look at this block. Four and a half tampon climbs, efforts. Like, again, you'll see efforts, efforts, easy, efforts. Okay, easy, efforts. But you can see, like, in this week, there's, like, two easy days of endurance training. Obviously, like, the rest days, but that's just that's just whatever. But you can see here, there's, like at least three to four days of like proper intensity. And that's kind of in December. If you look at January, like look at this one, you can see intervals, intervals, like there's just so many intervals. Like look at this week, it's absolutely bananas. Monday testing, then he does some other stuff, then he has a day off, then he has intensity, 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 three days in a row. It's just like crazy uh, how much intensity is done. Again, you can see here like, Look at this week here. Uh, so day off, intensity, 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 day off, intensity. I mean, like, they're just not doing what people say they're doing. And I know, you know, they're on an altitude camp or whatever, but, like, they're just not. Like, again, you can see this is UAE, UAE stage, so obviously, like, again, pretty hard. In March, again, like, what is he doing? Efforts, efforts, efforts. Like, there's just so many. Again, you can see here, like, um, this is a stage race, sorry, but again, like there's a lot of efforts every week, at least three to four consistently, sometimes more. 
Um, so again, it, it's just like, and then you can see before the Jiro, he's doing efforts, 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 efforts. I mean, so I just don't believe this whole two days. It's actually hard to find a week that he does do two days of intensity. Sorry, only two days of intensity. Here he does three days of intensity. So you could say that's pretty easy. But again, that's in December. Um, again, another person who's kind of interesting is Niels van der Poel. So again, during the aerobic season, yeah, okay, he's doing six hours here. You can see like, okay, his training is cracked. But the point is like an example week during threshold, he's doing intervals every single day, five days in a row. We saw Brandon Minotti's training the other day. And again, what did he do? He had effort days, like three, day, three, two, three times in a row. So we come back to this kind of this 80-20 or, you know, maybe people like to say eight, like, you know, 80%, 75, 5, 15, 20. You know, this whole kind of thing of no one's doing in between the zones. Well, they are doing in between the zones. It depends on the season. I think that's not as useful. I think what's more interesting is kind of just this whole two days of high intensity and like the kind of focus on that at least of like you, you're just not going to hit this too often but then I just don't really understand it because like these people are like outrageous I mean winning Olympic gold medals uh you know podium grand tours and it's just intensity 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 and I think that's it what, what does it show well it shows these guys can tolerate this much intensity I don't think it shows anything else. I don't think it shows that this is the optimal way to train. I don't think it shows that this is what you should do. But I think it does go to show that like three effort days a week is is not that excessive compared to what some of these guys are doing. Um, and it, what it makes me wonder more is like, where are these studies coming from in terms of the fact, because they always say they look at pro cyclists and they do this intensity. But then I don't know if it's like, in total, yes, because if you look at Caruso's training, like, you know, on this day, how much time? He's done four hours and he's spending 20, 40, 58, like an hour and 10 out of the four hours of intensity. So obviously the total training intensity distribution, like this would be an 80-20 ride, obviously, but they don't mean that. And 80-20 is the point of like most of your time is spent easy, a little bit hard, but I just don't see it. Um, and, and the more I look at pro riders training, you know, they're always in cycling weekly, they're doing this, they're doing that. They are just doing a lot of intensity and I think it's hard to really get around that. Um, and I'd kind of like maybe people to look at this or people to explain and go, okay, yeah, the optimal thing is this, but we do so much high intensity because of whatever. Um, but again, like just look at this week, one, two, three, four, five days intensity. And again, it's like six and a half hours. Okay, there's only 10 minutes at 380. But what we're seeing here again is that the point is, is like as soon as you get over that first ventilatory threshold, I know it's under 120 minutes, so it's kind of hard to say. The point is, it's like, they say, it's a they, they reckon, obviously it may, demarcate a binary threshold. So the point is, as soon as you get over LT1 or VT1, whatever you want to call it, you know, then you're going to have delayed recovery. So that's kind of why maybe you might say, okay, that's not really a day of intensity. Maybe it isn't, but even so, we got at least four days here. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing and it's something I haven't really like kind of fully squared in my head of exactly what is optimal, what isn't optimal because you've got two conflicting things. But it's um interesting to see what the literature says and what people are actually doing.